Welcome to the Watchman Privacy Podcast. I'm Gabriel Custodiet, a privacy consultant and author of The Watchman Guide to Privacy, available on Amazon. I also offer a Bitcoin and crypto privacy course at bitcoinprivacycourse.com. Either of these supports the show and makes sure it keeps going. You can find links in the description. I have two housekeeping notes. First, a quick call for help. Would you please take 60 seconds, pause the episode, and help me out with one or multiple of the following. If you have a YouTube, Odyssey, BitChute, or Rumble account, please subscribe to my channel as well as leave a few thumbs up and comments. If you bought my book on Amazon, leave me a review there. Follow me on Twitter. Rate me on whatever podcast app that you use. This is all very much appreciated and indeed necessary for this show to thrive. My channel is being shadow banned, which stunts its growth. Big Tech doesn't like when I have episodes on alternatives to Big Tech, climate change surveillance, and episodes on Edward Snowden's work. In other words, when I speak the inconvenient truth. And I have no intention of changing my course, so please help me out and you out if you get some value from the show. Thank you very much. Second, I have recently started sending out my newsletter again. It has been more than a year since I did so. You can sign up for the newsletter at the bottom of my website at watchmanprivacy.com. I'm having some trouble with ad blockers hiding the widget, so sorry about that. I'm working on a solution so you don't have to shut it off on my site. But if you want to hear more from me, including even more controversial privacy advice that I sometimes wouldn't dare share on my podcast, then please subscribe. Our last newsletter was on how to make your house raid-proof in the event that someone shows up looking for your digital or physical data. A newsletter service is also crucial if I'm ever fully banned. Giving me an email address that reaches you is a great way for me to spread the word in such a scenario. Okay, let's talk Bitcoin full nodes, and we're going to do it at an introductory level. We talk about Bitcoin because it is an excellent alternative to the surveying monetary systems that we have been forced to comply with. Whether that is modern banking with its know your customer mandates or Visa or services such as PayPal that are unreliable and even censorious these days. The last couple of years of cancel culture has shown that Financial services are untrustworthy business partners and can destroy you because they know who you are and control your money and play politics instead of doing their job. Bitcoin, when used properly, gets around all of this, allowing you to make digital transactions without anyone needing to trust you and without anyone having the ability to shut you down. Bitcoin full nodes make Bitcoin's sovereignty even better. If you get deep into Bitcoin privacy, you'll encounter the following statement. If you value your Bitcoin privacy, you should run your own node. There is much to unpack in this statement, and that is the topic of this episode. Discussing full nodes gets us into the architecture of Bitcoin, and you know that I believe in always starting with the fundamentals. The entirety of the digital money, known as Bitcoin, really just boils down to two things. One, a file that contains all of the Bitcoin transactions and their owners, the blockchain or ledger. And two, the computer code that explains how this data will be transmitted. Sure, there are more complexities to this code, or Bitcoin protocol. You have the intricacies of how private keys and public keys work, how seed phrases work, and various other of Bitcoin's genius mechanisms. And you can view all of this open source computer code on the Bitcoin repository on GitHub. Pull up a browser and visit github.com slash Bitcoin. Bitcoin is simple in the sense that it is merely a ledger that everyone can see with a few rules about how the text of that ledger changes hands. What then is a Bitcoin node? A Bitcoin node is Bitcoin. A node stores all of the code that we just talked about. Remember, Bitcoin is not centralized. It is not disseminated from GitHub. That's just where people work on Bitcoin and make the code available to analyze. When we say that Bitcoin is decentralized, what we mean is that it is run on thousands of nodes across the world. All of these nodes are running the current version of Bitcoin that you and I and the miners rely on when we use Bitcoin. If all Bitcoin nodes were shut down across Earth, there would be no Bitcoin. Conversely, as long as there is one node running, then Bitcoin can't exist. Bitcoin exists through its nodes. Running your own full node is also important for privacy reasons that we'll get to in a moment. But it's worth reiterating that nodes are essential for Bitcoin's existence. In addition to, well, being Bitcoin, these nodes verify incoming transactions to make sure they accord with the Bitcoin ledger. Having done this, the node then sends the transaction along to miners to be processed. Nodes thus have the ability to vote, by which I mean that their owner can choose to run a new version of Bitcoin that has received consensus among developers as an agreed-upon improvement, or abstain from running the new version. 
I know this is a bit complex, but hopefully you've grasped some of it. When you run a Bitcoin node, you are part of Bitcoin. You sustain it and take part in determining its future. Let's move on to more self-serving reasons to run a full node. A full node gives you a copy of Bitcoin that you can use and trust yourself. Your full node holds a copy of the entire ledger of Bitcoin. And this takes up some space, nearly 430 gigabytes as of September 2022. This accounts for all of the transactions in Bitcoin since 2009, when it was created. You don't have to run a full node. You can, for example, run a pruned node that validates only the last few blocks. But if you're going that far, you may as well run a full node to get the full benefits. Where do wallets fit into all of this? Briefly, Bitcoin wallets are simply software that allow you to interact with the Bitcoin ledger, the protocol, and the miners. And wallets do this by syncing with a node. Now you might be saying, I certainly don't remember downloading 400 gigabytes to use my Bitcoin wallet. That's true, and that's because most Bitcoin wallets are lightweight wallets, which means they do not keep their own record of the ledger. Instead, they access the blockchain via a third-party node. Here's the crucial point. Everyone using Bitcoin is using a Bitcoin node, whether they are aware of it or not. If you're not aware of what node you're running, then you're probably running the default node of your wallet provider. In other words, you're doing that thing that Bitcoiners dread most, relying on a third party. This means that the wallet provider's node can see certain things about your Bitcoin. What can they see? They can see the various addresses that you have within your wallet. They therefore know how much Bitcoin is in that wallet. They can possibly see your IP address if you haven't obscured it. Is all of this a privacy problem? Yes and no. If you have configured your Sparrow wallet in the way I suggest in my book and my crypto privacy course, then you're running Sparrow's borrowed node via Tor. Remember that Tor is an IP obscuring global network. So the Sparrow node is not going to see your IP address. Can the node see your wallet amount and your various addresses still? Sure. And if it was a nefarious actor running it, and there are surveillance nodes as you can imagine, then over time they could build out a profile of your spending activities and potentially hone in on you. It's not an obvious path to exposure though, and I'll be asking this question to my upcoming guests who are experts on nodes, just how a nefarious node might uncover one's identity. Ultimately, a Bitcoin node does not grant privacy, it augments it. If you buy your Bitcoin from a public exchange like Kraken, or you have attached your name to that Bitcoin in some other way, then your Bitcoin node is obviously not going to erase this permanent record, attaching your identity to a Bitcoin transaction. In that scenario, you'll have to live with the fact that Kraken and anyone who subpoenas or hacks them might know that you made a Bitcoin transaction at one point, and that it leads to a dead-end non-custodial wallet, along with all the potential consequences of that information. Running your own Bitcoin node is a small but not insubstantial privacy increase. The way I see it is that you can sleep sounder at night knowing that you are running your own copy of Bitcoin and not having to borrow someone else's. A full node is not essential, but is something that the more you get into Bitcoin, the more you will want to consider doing it. There are, of course, other reasons to run a node. To promote Bitcoin, most obviously, and further its decentralized capacity, but also to ensure no chance of fraudulent transactions. When you run a full node and connect it to your Sparrow wallet, or your Samurai wallet, then you yourself are verifying your transaction based on your node's own copy of the blockchain. There's no chance of a middleman attack or fraud. That's great. You can also use a full node to search transactions on your own copy of the blockchain instead of potentially exposing your browser fingerprint or IP address on a website. These are nice add-ons, but again, not essential. I chose a Bitcoin node that had a few additional privacy tricks up its sleeve. I chose the Ronin Dojo Tonto, whose website you can find in the description. I'll also be interviewing the creators in the upcoming weeks, so stay tuned, and send me any questions you have about nodes for them at podcast at watchmanprivacy.com. Before we get into the specific pre-built full node I chose, which is expensive, let's discuss the free options that are out there. You can run a full node fairly straightforwardly without buying anything. The Bitcoin code that I mentioned on GitHub is free and open source software. You can at any time download an instance of a full node from bitcoincore.org and run it on any computer you have lying around that has at least 500 gigabytes of empty space. Keep in mind that the blockchain is ever expanding, so the space will slowly increase. By downloading Bitcoin Core onto your computer, you will be running a full node, and you can use it without exposing your wallet details to someone else's node. There are a few downsides to this approach. 
You obviously have to reserve 500 gigabytes on your computer for it. And when you shut down your computer, the node shuts down and is not helping the Bitcoin community. But you could certainly make your own transactions and gain privacy from doing that and then shut it down. That's not a bad option. Or you could keep it running at all times by putting it onto a Raspberry Pi mini computer and letting it sit in a corner of your house. The main downsides I see are twofold. First, Bitcoin Core does not run through Tor by default. It also does not easily connect to some wallets. That's where the Ronin Dojo project comes in. I like the Ronin Dojo Tonto node. That's a mouthful, I know. Ronin Dojo is the node project. It's basically a version of Bitcoin Core with a few additions. The Tonto in the name refers to the pre-built version that the company has made available for sale so that you don't have to build or download anything yourself. Ronin Dojo has some handy features. It forces Bitcoin Core to always connect via Tor, which is huge for privacy seekers. It means you don't have to worry about your internet service provider, for example, seeing that there is Bitcoin traffic. Even if you have a firewall running a housewide VPN, the addition of Tor is additional protection. Ronin Dojo also easily connects to your Samurai wallet, an Android-only privacy wallet, and allows you to whirlpool your Bitcoin 24-7, which makes those Bitcoin more obscured and private over time. But before we discuss the full benefits of the Ronin Dojo Tonto, let me walk you through the process of purchasing it and setting it up so you can imagine what a node is all about. I first purchased the Ronin Dojo Tonto from their website at ronindojo.io, link in the description. Due to the chip shortages, which could get worse in upcoming months and years rather than better, buying equipment like this is unpredictable, so get them when you see them in stock. You can purchase a Tonto with Bitcoin for added privacy and have it shipped to a location that is not your house, as I always advocate, or have it shipped to a friend or church or something of this kind. The box it came in does not have any branding and even the internal box was completely black with no logos. This was most welcome. Inside the box is an aluminum case, quite attractive, which is Ronin Dojo's MO, which contains a Rock Pro mini computer, a nice step up from a Raspberry Pi a one terabyte solid state drive, and a micro SD card which has the Ronin Dojo operating system running on it. The Tonto also came with a power cord and an ethernet cable. I should note here that the Tontos only ship to the US and only recently to the European Union. Fortunately, I know someone who lives in these places such that they could ship it to me in Tokyo, which is where I identify as having been at the time I received it. As is commonly the case in the open source friendly Bitcoin community, you can benefit from Ronin Dojo without their physical Tonto device. You can download the Ronin Dojo for free using your own equipment, should you choose. By purchasing the pre-built device from the website, you get the package already assembled for you, the software already installed, a sleek case if that matters to you, and you're supporting an excellent Bitcoin privacy company that works on other projects such as the Samurai Wallet. The Tonto is a plug and play device. You plug it into your modem and you plug it into the electrical socket and within 10 minutes, it will have installed the operating system and began its days long download of the Bitcoin ledger, all without your input. To be honest, I messed up mine by accidentally unplugging the cord in the first 10 minutes. So I had to spend half an hour opening the case, removing the micro SD card, reflashing the corrupt operating system using Belena Etcher, and then doing some Linux terminal commanding. That process wasn't that difficult, and the Ronin Dojo support is excellent on the occasions that I have reached out to them. To use the Tonto, you must download the full Bitcoin ledger, which for me took nearly three days with an internet connection of 110 gigabytes per second. This is normal, and in the past, before SSD usage, used to take even longer. Still, if you have a data cap, you might want to calculate, and also calculate for the fact that the Tonto will be uploading and downloading many gigabytes worth of data per month moving forward. Best estimates are 220 gigabytes of uploaded data and 20 gigabytes of downloaded data. So yeah, that's a lot, and that's you helping out the Bitcoin community. Once the Tanto is set up, you can access it like you would any networking equipment in your house by going to a browser and typing in the device's IP address. You can, from here, see a nice looking graphical interface to see the status of your node, have your own private blockchain transaction viewer and set up the backend for your Samurai or Sparrow wallet so that it can whirlpool your Bitcoin on an ongoing basis. You can also link the node to your Sparrow wallet, which is the main thing we are trying to do for our immediate privacy. I won't get into the details here, especially in an audio show, but there you have it. You now have all the benefits of a Bitcoin node. 
let's finish by reiterating the limited privacy benefits of a full node, and specifically a Ronin Dojo Tonto node. By running your own node, you are not relying on a third-party node which can collect information about your addresses and how much Bitcoin you own. Given that there could be nefarious nodes that you accidentally connect to, running your own node takes away that vulnerability. If these were the only privacy benefits, I might not run a full node. Well, I might run it to help the Bitcoin collective, but I might not actively do it for privacy reasons. That's where the Ronin Dojo Tonto comes in. This modified node forces me to run it via Tor, so that as long as I attach my wallet to run with the Tonto, my Bitcoin behavior is protected behind the excellent Tor network. That's a nice addition. The second addition is that the Tonto is configured to easily connect to your Samurai wallet or Sparrow wallet and allow you to whirlpool your Bitcoin for as long as the Tonto is running. Whirlpooling is a process that involves breaking the certainty of your Bitcoin's past history by combining it with other Bitcoin from other people and sending you back a random chunk equivalent to what you put in. The Samurai Whirlpool is one of the greatest Bitcoin privacy tools we have, and the major downside is that you have to have your wallet up and running for it to work, for some reason. So the Tonto allows us to connect our wallet to it and then run the Whirlpool process in the background, meaning that we can go through multiple cycles of pooling and after a few weeks have some of the most private Bitcoin on the planet. I hope I've at least helped your understanding of Bitcoin and what a Bitcoin node is. Perhaps this podcast will simply serve as your first step toward exploring it yourself. We will have the team who made the Ronin Dojo node on the podcast in the next few days, so please send me your node questions to podcast at watchmanprivacy.com. A node is definitely for Bitcoin believers, by which I mean those who see Bitcoin as a money that will be with us for some time. In the same way as running a Tor server helps one feel that one is literally part of the infrastructure of a privacy service, I found that running a node has helped me to understand what Bitcoin is and why it is such a powerful technology. So long as no one discovers my node and I'm running it, Bitcoin will exist, at least on my node. And that's a powerful feeling.